Hey guys, so let's talk about how to learn how to program effectively. Actually, this lesson, which you're about to get, applies to anything that you want to learn. Anyway, so here's the gist of it. I'll get right into it. Number one, your brain can only take in new information at a certain rate or a certain clip, if you will. Think about this. When you crammed before an exam, if you went to high school, high school, university, college, whatever, and you crammed before the exam, you went to the exam, you crammed, you had a short-term memory of things, you did your exam, and everybody knows that two, three weeks later you forgot everything. That's not learning, that's not, and not really effective when it comes to work-related learning. So if you want to learn how to program for the sake of a career, you don't want to cram and then forget. What you want to do is you want to get long-term, well, permanent understanding of what it is it means to code, what coding is about, and how to do it, and how to approach it, techniques, concepts, etc. So this is what you got to do. You got to gradually expose yourself on a consistent basis to programming concepts and techniques. In fact, my Studio Web app is designed around that premise. So when you watch a video, then the contents of the video are reinforced immediately with quizzing and code challenges. And when you do come back into Studio Web, let's say you do a half an hour of training, an hour of training, and then you'd say, okay, I'm gonna take a break because the brain's getting a little tired, getting a little frazzled. That's an indicator. It's a, that's a good sign to know that it's time to take a break. So you take a break, you come back at it maybe five hours later if you, if you feel refreshed, maybe the next day if you feel refreshed. Come back the next day, the key is you want to come back to it when you're feeling refreshed, you're feeling invigorated. You come back and then StudioWell remembers not only where you were, what lesson you were on, but even what question you were on. It takes you right back to where you started, saving you time so you can progress more quickly. What you're going to see as you learn to code is that the first day, for example, you may be able to study hard for half an hour and it starts to start to get a headache, starts to overwhelm you. So you take a break. Then when you're feeling relaxed again, the next day, you go back to it. Instead of only being able to study for half an hour, all of a sudden you can do 45 minutes. So you're taking in even more. And then you take another break, you come back again a day later, five hours later, two days later, depending on how your brain is absorbing the information. Then all of a sudden it's not 45 minutes, you take in an hour. What's going to happen as you continue to expose yourself more and more to coding techniques and practices and concepts, they will become easier and easier and easier to understand and to assimilate. And you see, I use something called the spiral teaching method within the Studio Web courses, in all my courses, that take into account how the brain best learns and more easily learns information. You see, people go to school to learn how to teach, people study that, there's a skill to it. And that's one of the reasons why so many courses out there are not very effective because the people teaching them don't know how to teach. Now, I come from a family of teachers. I've been building courses since 2003. I've been teaching. I taught martial arts for a long time. And I also studied learning theory. My major in university was psychology. So all these elements go into my courses. That's one of the big reasons why they are so effective. I understand how the brain assimilates new information. The key to this is that you got to do it consistently and gradually. And you got to give your brain some rest period in between the learning. You gotta do that so that the brain has time to assimilate the information. It's like training. If you're doing weight training or any type of sports really, but I'll do it weight training. One of the most important things you can do in weight training, I know it doesn't look like it, I used to do it a long time ago. So anyway, one of the things, the most important thing you, you need to do is to give your body a chance to rest. You have to give your body a chance to rest. Most athletes overtrain regardless of the sport. You hear it all the time in competitive environments. So, for example, I remember when I was actively involved in heavy duty martial arts, sometimes, well, sometimes people get injured, so they get injured, and they were, f at some point, they're forced to leave the training because the injury is so bad. So, what happens? They leave for two weeks, they come back, and I remember many of my training partners would be like, oh boy, I left for two weeks, I'm gonna be really rusty, aye, terrible. They get back in and all of a sudden they're performing much better than they had 
in over a year or two. And the reason that is, is because they gave your, their bodies and in fact their minds a chance to rest, to heal itself, to assimilate what they've learned so they can come back fresh. With that in mind, I remember for a period of time, for about a year or so, I trained with the Canadian wrestling team. I wasn't a member, I trained with them though. And I went and I trained with the Canadian wrestling team because I wanted to learn how to wrestle with the best wrestlers out there. So I trained with them. And I remember that their coach was a gold medalist in the Olympics. During the off season, they would train really hard, push themselves to get new levels, new gains. But then when they were in competition season, they would slow down the training tremendously so that their bodies were very well rested. It's this interval type of training is consistent across many disciplines, not just sports, not just learning, business as well. Uh, back to uh, weight, gain, weight training. After you work out really hard and you literally tear the muscle, you have to give your muscles a chance to rest. People come back too quickly into the weight training. They don't, their muscles are still sore. They go back and they're, and they're training and they're not making the gains they could make if they just rest. They just rested a little while longer, drink, drink lots of fluids, eat well, blah, 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 so you sleep well. But you've got to give your body a chance to rest. Same thing when you're learning how to code. You're literally carving out new pathways. You're creating new connections in the brain. You're, you're, you're assimilating new knowledge new fundamental ways of thinking, in fact. When you learn to program, you're gonna learn how to think in a different way. So as a result of that, you have to give your brain a chance to rest in between sessions. Now, if there's initial resistance and laziness, you have to also push yourself a little bit there. That's a little trick. If you don't feel like doing your scheduled web development or your PHP or your JavaScript or your Python training on a particular day, my suggestion to you is you sit down and if you're doing studio web, you do one video and you do the quizzes with that one video lesson. And then you just walk away. That might take you 15, 20 minutes. Or you write two or three lines of code. Do something just to give yourself a little exposure. And if, it, and if when you sit down and you start writing that code or you start doing some of the lessons, if it, start, if it doesn't start rolling along, there's still a lot of resistance, okay, then you do that one lesson, answer the quiz questions, or you write those few lines of code, then you back away, put it away, and do something totally unrelated to coding, something that works the other side, the non-logical side of your brain. Give your brain a rest, relax. But what you often find is that once you start doing some lessons, you start writing a little bit of code, all of a sudden you start writing a lot of code. That being said, you still need to schedule downtime, rest time as you are learning. Same thing when you're actively programming. Often enough, you're going to come into a situation where you're writing a your code, you're writing your app, you're writing your program, and you just can't figure out this bug. This bug is just like bugging you. You just can't get it. You can't figure it out. And you may have worked on it for half an hour, an hour. I made a mistake of work, trying to work on things for two, three hours, and I just couldn't get the answer. So what I did is I would just back off and say, okay, forget it. I'm just going to look at it tomorrow or maybe five hours from now. Especially when you sleep on it overnight, what you're going to find is that you have a bug, you hit the wall, you can't figure it out, you sleep on it, and then come the next day, having not looked at it at all, having not thought about it, you sit down in front of the computer, and within like two minutes, you figure out the answer. You go, oh, that's it. Because behind the scenes, the brain is working on it. It's some assimilating things. Here's a little tip to uh, take away as I end this particular vlog. The largest, most powerful part of your brain is non-conscious, meaning you're not aware of what's going on. It's so powerful. It's so capable. It's doing all kinds of stuff behind the scenes. It's scanning the room like a supercomputer, like a super radar, and it's taking information, it's simulating information, and you have no control over it. You are not aware of it consciously, and, but it's there to do some super powerful work for you. What you need to do is you need to expose it to information over and over again so that it knows what it should be working on for you. So uh, that's the little psychological tip I'll give you. Again, my major in university was psychology, so I have some knowledge about this stuff. So there you go. So that's how you should learn, incremental, consistent, give yourself, give yourself some time to rest in between 
so that your brain can simulate information. If you hit a wall, back away. Uh, but try to be consistent. Don't work for four hours one day and then not touch it for five days. You know, take one day off, come back to it, etc. You get the idea. So you're going to have to work it out. You're going to have to learn how your brain can assimilate this information. And in time, what you'll see is that you're going to be able to assimilate more and more and more information much more quickly. And to the point where after you've done a couple of languages, you'll be able to learn a whole new programming language in a few hours and uh, be able to write good code, production code. But I've addressed this in other videos. All right, that's it for now. Ciao.